Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for my first day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I'm starting a little late because we had we were on vacation and we've been really busy. Even though I'm starting late though, I'm gonna do my best. Today I'm preserving stuff out of our garden, tomatoes and peppers mostly. Good morning everyone. Now that we're back from vacation, I'm out in the garden picking all the produce we have that's ready and then I'm going to show you what I do with it until I'm ready for canning. I'm growing tons of these Roma tomatoes to can with because I like to can tomatoes in many different ways. So I'm just going to show you what I like to do. There she is, stealing my peppers. I have a few that got knocked off yesterday when I was taking the fence down, so I'm going to make sure and grab those. I don't know if you can see, but I'm grabbing anything that has some color to it. I even have some slicers ready. I'm going to put those in a separate basket. All right, there's us a whole basket of the Roma tomatoes for canning. I have my two slicer tomatoes over here and I'm gonna pick some peppers because we have tons of peppers ready. We're managing to get nice red peppers this year. This plant here is purple peppers and I've never grown those before, but I'm wondering if when they turn green, that means they're overripe. Now I stepped on a pepper here, so I'm gonna give that to Mocha. Mocha. I forgot about our eggplants, and so I hope it's not overripe. I've been really excited to try this eggplant. Let's see. Oh, it's changing color. I wonder if that, I forgot the clippers inside. There it goes. Yeah, I wonder if it's no good. That's some other beauties coming on though. I don't think any of them are ready yet. All right, let's see what else we have. If anything, our pigs got in here. They found a way through the blackberry bushes and they ate all our watermelon. So we're gonna have to wait for new watermelon. A lot of our pumpkins died, squash bugs got them. I tried spraying them. Well, I tried putting diatomaceous earth on them before we left, but it didn't work. You can see over here where the pigs came through. Here's what's left of a watermelon they got a hold of. I guess that watermelon split open. Uh, lovely. This came right through there. See that opening? All those blackberries. Oh my gosh, look. You get cantaloupe too, it looks like. You can see they just left tracks everywhere they went. Those cantaloupe are definitely different than we usually grow. Huh. They're a mix of watermelon and cantaloupe interesting. The corn is looking good. Look at that. It's filling in nicely. That one should be getting close. It's not very big. And more tomato plants over here that have gotten out of control. I should have put the tomato cage around them instead of beside them. I tried to get them to grow up. It didn't work. This little bitty one has peppers. I should have picked them off before. You should pick them off if you want it to continue to grow. And this is just new coal crops I've put in the ground. It looks like most of them died, unfortunately, while I was on vacation, but hopefully that's my squash and zucchini growing. I covered it up this time so I wouldn't get squash bugs. I did take down the fence yesterday so that Shane could mow around the garden so that it's easier to access without all the weeds. Well, I guess that's it for my morning veggie picking. Now to take them inside and get ready to process them. All right, so to preserve my harvest, the first thing I've done is take it all and I've washed it in the sink. And I have this little potato brush I bought at some random kitchen store when we were on vacation one time. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon or anywhere, but it's just a gentle little brush. that got something stuck to them. I just use this gentle brush to clean them really well. That way I got them nice and clean so that we can store these. Now I could can them right away. Um, a lot of them that are light, I'm gonna let sit on the counter until they ripen fully. But the ones that are already ripe, I want to go ahead and I want to take care of those so that they don't go bad. And so right now I'm gonna let them dry. I've 
I've cleaned them all up. I got out the ones that have already went bad. I'll feed those to the animals. And so I'm gonna let this all dry and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next since I am not ready to can yet. Okay, I'm gonna get started preserving our tomatoes now and some of the peppers. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I have my food saver out and food saver bags and I'm gonna make really large bags. And what I'm doing today, I went ahead and put what it is and the date on it so that when I pull them out of the freezer, it could be next year. Depends how busy I get. But I made them really large bags because I wanna be able to reuse the bags later for something else. And so once I've cut it open, it'll still be large enough to use for something else. Now I have my little doohickey, whatever it's called, that's gonna hold my bag for me. And I have my scrap bowl here. I'm gonna take my nice ripe tomatoes and first I'm gonna core them. I grab my cutting board real quick cause that will be important. <laughs> so I'm taking them, I'm gonna core the tomatoes. which pretty much means I am cutting the stem out. And then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna cut them into smaller pieces because when I get these out of the freezer, I don't want to thaw them all the way because it gets really messy if you try thawing them. And I want them to be in small enough pieces that they'll cook down pretty quick. I will not be peeling them because um, I have a food processor or a, I can't think of what it's called, but a food mill. I have a food mill that will, um, Take the peels off if needed, and sometimes we leave the peels on and just blend them in depending on what we're making. I also forgot to mention that if you do let them thaw, the peel will fall right off. So if you're wanting to peel them, you might just freeze them and then take the peel off when you're done. It isn't the best knife. I thought it'd be the best for pouring them, but it's not really the best for cutting them up. I'm just taking my bag here and I'm putting them all in it, just like that. I'm gonna include the middles too. So the Roma tomatoes, they are better for canning with because they don't have all the juice that like a normal slicer would have. Although if I have extra slicers, I will can with those too. It just takes a little longer to process them to get rid of that extra juice. You just kind of have to boil the extra water out. And um, same with like cherry or grape tomatoes. They are very watery also but I have canned with those a lot because we seem to get volunteers of those around here. Other than letting them go to waste, I would prefer to just can them if we can't eat them. Of course, those are the best kind for popping in your mouth. These smell wonderful. I have to tell you, I've got to get these put away anyway because if not, I'm gonna be eating them all as tomato sandwiches. I also wanted to show you this tomato. So this tomato maybe has some slight imperfections on it. Um, I will still use it for canning. It's still good. It's still a good tomato, but um, for some of those spots that maybe aren't the best, I just cut them off. I just take my knife, it's perfect underneath, so it's still a good tomato. You can still can with it. Just cut the imperfections or bad spots off. All right, so I have my bag nice and full. I did pull down the edges. Um, that way they wouldn't get nasty and they would seal easier because if they get all wet, you're gonna have to wipe them off with a paper towel. Um, I do did notice I have my seal at the bottom obviously didn't seal all the way so I'm gonna have to fix that but that's okay so now I have two choices I can either stick this bag in the freezer let these firm up for maybe an hour um, and then I can vacuum seal it or I can just do a normal seal now um, you won't be able to vacuum seal at least in the food saver I have and the previous one we had, you can't do a vacuum seal when there's this much liquid. Uh, the liquid just continually goes through and the bag won't seal. So all I'm gonna do is stick my bag in here. Got my bag in. This should be far enough. Um, I'm holding it over on the drip edge. I'm just doing the regular seal. It'll just seal it. Okay, and the light went off, so it's done. So I'm gonna open it and now I'm gonna reseal the bottom since we have a leak. Like I was telling you, if it's wet, you really need to wipe it off. So I'm gonna wipe this broken seal really well. And then I'm gonna try to get all the air out this time because um, now that this will be the final seal and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna try to seal this. Okay, that is done. Let's check that seal. Good. I got out as much air as I could. Looks really good. Oh, this side is a little wet. I'm gonna try to wipe it off. Make sure this is sealed really well. 
If it gets too wet in there, it will not seal. So I wonder if I have a leak or if that just came out to begin with. It's okay. Okay. Before I put these in the freezer, there's one more thing I'm gonna do. And that is, I'm gonna weigh it. Most of the recipes I use, um, I use go off weight. Some of them do say so many tomatoes, but I'm just gonna weigh them so I'll know the weight. And it looks like it's almost five pounds, four pounds, 15.8 ounces. So I'm gonna write that on here. Four pounds, 15.8 ounces. So now when I go to do one of my canning recipes, I will know how much tomatoes I have right here and if it's the one I wanna get out of the freezer. Okay, so I am done with tomatoes. I have a bunch you'll notice still on the counter, but I'm gonna let them ripen further. A lot of them have yellow or orange on them and they could just, they'll just taste better if I let them ripen longer. Um, two of the bags are almost five pounds and then I have a small bag that's not quite two pounds. And so those are ready to go in the freezer. Next up, I'm gonna take some peppers and I'm gonna take the ones that are partially red and partially green and probably some of these green ones as well. I'm trying to save some to make some either stuffed pepper soup or just plain stuffed peppers with, but um, I'm gonna take some of these and I'm gonna do them in just slices so we can use them for fajitas or um, there's a green bean recipe I love that we put peppers in. So I'm just gonna slice them up and put them in a bag. Once again, I have my bag with um, what it is listed and the date. I will not weigh these. Uh, and then I will just put in the bag how much I think I'll use in one setting because I don't want to open a bag of frozen peppers and not use them all at once. Okay, I gave everything a good rinse and I have my bag all ready. And I took pretty much the peppers that aren't real pretty. Um, not that it matters what they look like, they all eat the same. But um, these are the ones that I'm going to freeze for later. And this is the way I like to cut them up. I don't know why, but I'm very picky about seeds. I don't like seeds in my peppers whenever I'm cooking them. I know a lot of people, it doesn't seem to bother, but you might notice me picking out all the seeds. And this is the easiest way to do it without having to do a lot of seed work. Except for that right there. And don't mind the band-aid on my thumb. I did not cut myself. Yesterday I was walking out of our bedroom and somehow the um, little metal piece where the door latches went right under my nail and it is very sore. So I just have a band-aid on it to try to keep some of the juice out of it. I also um, grabbed the green peppers that weren't exactly a pretty setting up pepper because if I make stuffed peppers instead of pepper stew, I want them to be able to sit up in the pan. So that's just a little bit of my thought process and how I chose which peppers I was going to freeze. My knife's getting a little dull. I need it to be sharpened. All right, there's our green peppers. It might seem like a lot, but most of the meals I make, I love green peppers, so I'll just fix them all. And then um, they might not all go into the dish, but I will eat them all as leftovers or whatever, because I love cooked peppers. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and seal it. Since these are peppers and they're not too wet, I don't need to freeze them first. I'm just gonna put it on moist and then I'm gonna vacuum. All right, so that's it. We have our tomatoes that we have preserve that will be going in the freezer and we have peppers. You'll notice there's quite a bit on the counter behind me. I'll be sharing a video on how I use these um, in our meals this week. Thanks for hanging with me while I put away these tomatoes and peppers for the Every Bit Counts Challenge and I'll see y'all later. Bye!